The president has made his case to the American people on gun control and in the process may have exposed himself for failing miserably to address the real problems. Plenty of questions remain, including one about a certain organization that wasn't even in attendance at the town hall. The head of the GOP has made a promise many believe he can't keep, and it would appear Hillary Clinton cannot keep her fat bank account friends in the fold when she really needs them. We are told over and over again that we don't just want, but we need electric cars. Only the car coach can bring some sanity to this highly charged conversation. Time Warner says, oops. And there are plenty of mistakes to be noted in the week-ending political punching bag. Send us your tired, your hungry, your poor, those yearning for intelligent conversation without using the word birther. I'm Ed Berliner, and the hard line for Friday, January the 8th, begins right now. The notion that uh, we are creating a plot to take everybody's guns away so that we can impose martial but, law but there's certainly a is lot of a conspiracy? People. Yes, there's... that is a conspiracy. I would hope that you would agree with that. It is a false notion that I believe is circulated for either political reasons or commercial reasons in order to prevent a coming together among people of goodwill to develop common sense rules that will make a safer while preserving the Second Amendment. Those who look at President Obama's gun control edicts with an even-handed eye come away with the same conclusion. He's going to great lengths selling ideas that are too little, sometimes far too late, and quite often completely unconvincing. Then again, these are the lines that have become synonymous with this administration in the lame duck years. A town hall meeting on Thursday night that the White House is doing its best to downplay. Maybe because in the end, the president allowed himself to be little more than a standing target in a shooting gallery filled with Americans fed up with too much action and too much inaction. So let's lock and load and take some aim here, shall we? Welcome in the race and culture journalist and columnist for the Daily Beast, Barrett Holmes Pittner. And from the National Review Institute, Buckley Fellow in Political Journalism, Ian Tuttle. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining us. Ian, I'm going to come to you first on this. The president talks about common sense things that have to be done. But it sure seems to a lot of people as if this time he's really selling very little and he's going at it all the wrong way. He's not getting to the issues that really would help stop gun violence yes or no yeah i think that's quite right i mean you look at uh the the sort of dynamic that's being played out here right he goes out uh out to the press conference the other morning shed some tears uh says that these are the reforms that we need to to stop a gun uh, to help stop gun crime and then pivots to a town hall like last night and other circumstances where he has to say, ah, actually, these are just really small reforms. They're not doing anything well. Okay, which is it? A good example is these, ex these, these uh, actions are intended to close the so-called gun show loophole, which, of course, doesn't actually exist. Where most criminals get their guns, not gun shows or online, but from straw purchasers. Now, a couple years ago, it was reported <laughs> that U.S. attorneys uh, were in en masse choosing not to prosecute uh, straw, straw purchasers. Well, guess who has complete uh, control over hiring and firing U.S. attorneys? If the President of the United States wanted to go after the main source of guns that criminals are using in gun crimes, he could be hiring and firing these U.S. attorneys who have jurisdiction over those cases. But that's not what he's doing. Barrett, that to me catches something here, because with 300 million guns in America, and I've made this case many times, and I've told people many times, I'll make sure that everybody knows it again. I'm a gun owner. I'm a concealed weapon carrier. Most of the crimes are not committed by those who are sensible, logical, legal gun holders. It's the criminals out there. That's where a lot of these guns are being used in the commission of crimes. So shouldn't he be going after that instead of wasting this time into what seems to many just like showboating? Well, so I, I think with this issue, there's, there's a lot of complexity about making adequate laws that adhere to the Second Amendment rights of citizens, and you're talking about the wide array of people in America that would use a gun for many different purposes. So, like, the steps that you need to make to, like, create these changes, they're going to need to be incremental. They're not, you, you don't want to start something drastic because there's plenty of people just like you, Ed, who are following the rules, they're doing the right stuff, and we don't want to infringe upon their rights and like right off the bat, while we make steps to combat the people that are really addressing these problems, I think too often, uh, gu you know, gun supporters um, try to act that there's a like a silver bullet, like 
the president can do this one sweeping thing, and this will make the, the, the impact. Which, of course, everybody knows he can't because the Second Amendment is pretty much, and to use the word, bulletproof, because you would need the Supreme Court to weigh in, and the Supreme Court is not about to knock down anything in the Second Amendment. Well, and also, we, we live in a, a democratic society that encourages discussion, just like we're doing on this show. And when you, want, when you live in that kind of environment, you need to have a give and take. You need to have a discourse. You need to understand that big things happen through incremental steps. And what we see with this argument too often is that people won't allow these incremental steps, but they also won't allow big steps either. And what the president is trying to do is create some incremental steps, have a, a rapport back and forth with the American people, see what works, see what doesn't work, and just keep on discussing it because gun violence is something that as a society we should strive to diminish and make it as minimal as possible while also ensuring that we have the liberties that we value as people. And you, the only way to get that is through a valuable, valuable discourse with the people. I do and agree right with now, you on that. And, have and that discourse. Quite frankly, that's, that's a problem. lot of times what ha doesn't happen in this country anymore, not only on guns, but on so many things. We just don't want to talk. Everybody's either right or wrong, and that's usually the way it is, and it ends right. there. Now, let and, me. And, what one well, person Obama's who got a town hall, he wanted to talk, and that's the key thing. He wanted to talk to people, and what people were trying to ridicule about is that he didn't know everything. Like, we're having, trying to have okay. a discussion. Okay, let me make that point right here, because somebody who got in his face, well, not really got in his face, but made an awful lot of news for what she said is Taya Kyle. She's the wife of Chris Kyle, the American hero, the American sniper. He was a victim of gun violence. She told the president that laws do not stop criminals from being criminals and cannot stop horrific things from happening. Here's what she said. Some criminals will get their hands on firearms even if there's a background check. Somebody may lie on a form. Somebody uh, will uh, intend to commit a crime, but they don't have a record that shows up on the background check system. But in the same way that we don't eliminate all traffic ac accidents, but over the course of 20 years, traffic accidents g get lower, and of course, not what she said, but what the president said in response. I want to make sure I correct myself. Ian, let's get to that right now. And let's take what was said here a couple of minutes ago by Barrett when he's talking about having a rapport, discussing. I get it. That's a great idea. And he's talking. But is he really saying anything? I, I think that's that the whole point here is you've got one side saying you're not getting to the point. All you're doing is trying to make a legacy for yourself here instead of doing anything substantive. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm certainly with Barrett on on the idea that we need to be discussing. I, I think, though, that uh, this is maybe the f maybe the the first example in which we've had the president actually sitting down with uh, with people who really disagree with him on on the question of of what's best here. And the the simple fact is uh, the the statistical evidence, the the criminology uh, behind uh, the the types of measures that we could could put into place uh, weigh against the types of things that the president has been encouraging now for years. You know, uh, uh, assault rifle bans and and these sorts of things and uh, are in favor of the type, uh, way in favor, I think, of, of the types of reforms that he seemed to minimize, putting money, significant money, significant attention towards severe mental illness, which is where mass public shooters disproportionately come from. Again, going back to the straw purchasers, not the gun shows. I mean, the, it's, right. it's, it's, a, it's a careful look at the evidence that'll tell you which reforms, which incremental reforms, I agree with Barrett on that point, might actually work. The ones that he's for forwarding, we have very good evidence that they're, they're not going to work. Okay, now there's another side of this. Kimberly Corbin is a survivor of rape, the mother of two kids, told the president that carrying a weapon of her choosing is important to her and her family's sense of security. She asked why his administration is making it difficult, or she believes him to be making it difficult to own and carry a gun. Here's the president's response. There's nothing that we've proposed that would make it harder for you to purchase a firearm. And now, you may be referring to issues like concealed carry, but those tend to be state-by-state -state decisions, and we're not making any proposals with respect to what states are doing. They can make their own decisions there. Barrett, I only got a minute left. Quickly to you then, why is it that the president comes out and says, I'm not coming for the Second Amendment, I'm not coming for your weapons? He says it right out to Kimberly Corbin and others, and they don't and won't believe him. I can't say why people do and don't believe him, but like people for this president in particular find... Uh, they have a great desire to try to find an ulterior motive for his actions, despite everything that he says. Like, even during the town hall meeting, he said, this is my last year. I won't be able, I won't be present when a lot of these are going into play. Like, it's not for his legacy. 
Like the next administration will have to deal with these issues. You really don't think it's for his legacy, though? You really don't think think that he has that in the back of his mind? Oh, it wouldn't be, even if it wasn't the back, it's not in the front. And people talk about it as if this is what his main motivation is. It's like, no, he clearly he's on the way out. He's trying to make a change in America, which is what every president does or tries to do. And I think he's trying to do what he thinks is right. I think talking to the American people that are on both sides of the aisle and seeing what they think and hopefully having people come to the middle. But if people constantly try to stigmatize or say that there's an ulterior motive and we can't trust this minute step, because then he'll do something horrible, then we can't make any progress. Okay, yes, yes or no answer from both of you. Barrett, did the NRA make a mistake not showing up at the town hall? Uh, yes. Uh, Ian? No. Really? Okay, we're going to have to come back and discuss this, because many people think they should have been right there to get in the president's face. Great conversation. Barrett Holmes, Pittner, Ian Tunnel. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. We'll talk soon. Whither go as the president next in his search for a lasting legacy? That and more coming up next on The Hard Line.